Guys, today we have new light cones that were announced for 2.0, all the new free-to-play light cones that are coming to the game, and don't scam yourself because some are really good and some are not so good. So we're going to talk about all the light cones today. I'm going to put them on a list of 1 through 7 of what I think is the best to what I think is the worst. We're going to talk about each one, how each one applies to each character that's currently in the game right now, and then I'll give my insights later on the video on how I think uh, these light cones can get better with what type of character. So I think we should just start off first with, you know, we got a lot of light cones. We have seven new light cones, one for each path, one for destruction, hunt, uh, your addition, harmony, uh, inhility, preservation, and abundance, right? We have, we have one for each type, and they honestly look really nice. So let's go ahead and start off first with the destruction light cone. So the basic breakdown of what this is going to do is if you lose 25% of your max HP in one instance, meaning if you get attacked by an enemy in one instance and lose 25% of your max HP, or use an attack that consumes 25% of your max HP, this will be proccing off. But what this does after it takes your HP is is going to be healing you for 15% of your max HP back and giving you a huge attack buff. Uh, this is a 25% attack buff at S1, but it, this could almost double. I feel like it could double at S5, right? I don't know. No leakers here, surely, but I feel like this could be a lot higher at S5, considering you can get it to S5 for completely free. So yeah, this is just going to be a really good light cone. As far as who this could be good for, uh, really any destruction character. I actually wrote out like what 25% of max HP would look like. And it's gonna be 250 HP per a thousand HP you have so you have a thousand HP that means 250 HP if you lose 250 HP in one attack you get the buff so if you have 3,000 HP you need to take 750 HP worth of damage if you have 4,000 HP that's gonna be a 1,000 HP worth of damage and so on and so forth just keep building that up for this I think it's going to be really really good for blade right because blade has an ability where he's able to take a lot of his own HP with his ultimate and be able to get this buff uh, and considering this can only be activated once every three turns there's one turn downtime i think this will be absolutely amazing if you're using it on other destruction type characters you just might want to check to see what the average damage the enemy is doing to you is and then build from there right for something like this to activate in your claw you're going to need her to be at a lower hp because she does have defense or damage resist with her ultimate move so she's going to be taking less damage meaning you need to have the hp minimum lower you just really have to calibrate how much hp your characters have with this light cone it is a really good light cone honestly probably one of the best free-to-play light cones for destruction in my opinion honestly though it is really Relying on you getting attacked or having someone like Blade that consumes your own HP and you're able to consume enough of it. Number two is going to be Final Victor or All In. I don't know what it's named. Anyways, this is going to be the new Hunt Light Cone. Uh, this Light Cone is pretty all right. The basic premise of what this does is it's going to be increasing everyone's attack by 12%. So that's a free 12% attack buff to everyone. Of course, at a S5, this will be increased, but we don't know those numbers just yet. But on top of this, what it's going to do is you'll be getting these stacks of good fortune every time you land a crit hit on the enemy and you can get 8% crit damage for each one of these stacks at an S1. But the real big thing with this is that it only lasts until the end of the wearer's turn, meaning this doesn't really help you out too much with most characters, right? Meaning this is a kind of niche light cone, right? This is going to work great for follow-up characters like Dr. Ace. So you put the ultimate down, you have two follow-up attacks. That means he's already coming into his next attack with, you know, an extra 16% crit damage. I'm not, not to mention on top of that, once he uses his skill, he doesn't attack first. If that crits, you'll be getting another 8%. I think this will work good for Dr. Ratio. I think this will work really good for Topaz. And I think it could work for Zila. I don't, I'm not sure how the turn mechanic works when you kill an enemy uh, if this does work then you'd probably be getting an eight percent crit damage boost for her as well i think this could be pretty decent especially at an s5 getting that crit damage up for that one buff i think it could be beneficial but this is more of a niche light cone really you need to be doing damage in between turns to actually get the full potential of this light cone to actually activate now let's go ahead and hop into the next light cone which i think is probably the best light cone here uh the your addition light cone the day cosmos fell basically what this does is that an s1 is going to be increasing your attack by an extra 16 percent on top of that if you hit two enemies with whatever typing your erudition character is if there's two enemies on the field without typing you hit them you get a 20 percent crit damage buff for two turns i mean like this is super good like really good on most battles you go into you're gonna be facing two enemies if you're at a very very end of the battle or maybe you're facing the deer boss or it's just like one big boss at the end this might not help you as much because of course you do need to have at two enemies so Kafka wouldn't really help here uh Japard could help because he summons people I don't know it really depends on how many enemies the last fight is this is going to work really well for pure fiction though just because of the fact that there are so many enemies out in the field at all times and if you're bringing the correct typings in the battle which you should be doing anyways you'll be always having this up super super good light cone and it's a 20% crit damage increase at an S1 guys we don't even know what S5 is going to look like it could be miles better than this but with me sucking off that your additional light cone let's go ahead and talk about the new harmony light cone dream village 
Adventure. Now, Dreamville Adventure is a kind of complex one because you're going to need to put this on certain characters on certain teams, right? So the basic premise of this is if you use a skill attack, basic attack, or ultimate attack, you get a damage buff. But the only way you're getting that damage buff is if that character or another character on the team uses the same ability. So let's say you have a Hanya on the team, right? You throw a skill down on Hanya, right? That means any other person on the team that uses a skill attack will also get a damage buff. Say you have someone like Ting Yun on the team, you use a skill once, oh, so if you use a skill this time, they'll be getting their, you know, pretty big damage buff, but now if you use a basic attack, that switches over to the basic attack. So maybe you want to run Ting Yun with a blade, blade or something like that, right? Someone that consistently uses more basic attacks, you really just have to line this up, or even ultimate, for example, right? If you use the ultimate with a character, then you want to spam your ultimates in succession and then change the typing up after that. It, it can just get kind of convoluted and complex depending on how you're playing these characters. I do think it's a pretty good light cone because I don't think it's that hard to manage as long as you're putting the right harmony characters on the right teams with this certain light cone right here. I think it, it can fit a niche. The inhility light cone is going to be really good for dot characters. It also kind of plays like a mini good night sleep well. And what I mean by this is, as you can see here on screen, obviously, every time you put a debuff on the enemy, you'll be getting a damage increase. Now, this does only last for one turn. So that means you want to be putting as many debuffs on the enemy in that one turn as possible. Like, say you have E1 Kafka, for example, you get a fall up attack, you get lightning shock, and you get uh, your decapo as well, your your extra dot resistance penetration, whatever it is, the extra dot damage increase, right? This would work really well on someone like her. This would work really well on someone like Gwenaifen as well, because Gwenaifen can put, you know, different types of fire debuff on the enemy. On top of that, she can also put fire kiss on the enemy as well, so she would probably have a pretty easy time of getting this up, and also Black Swan as well will have a pretty easy time of getting this up. If your effect rate's over 80%, you do get a pretty large attack increase as well. I think overall, this will be a honestly pretty decent light cone for black swan you're getting damage increase and you're also getting a pretty solid uh, attack increase as well and if you're building you know your other characters with a lot of effect hit rate this can help them out a lot as well but this is more structured toward dot characters in my opinion now let's go ahead and go to the next one here which is the preservation light cone now this preservation light cone it's okay it gives you effect res and then for every 100 defense you have it'll be giving you a damage increase right now the effect res is really nice we don't know what this is going to look like at a level 20 i wouldn't assume it to be too much maybe max 25 percent I, I don't even think it'll go that high actually it probably won't even double what it has right now i actually haven't looked into my dreams for this one so let's say max 24 percent at s5 uh so that's a pretty substantial effect resistance buff you can maybe throw this on something like your japard or something like that the only downside or caveat with this is it doesn't really increase your aggro rate on these characters, and your preservation units right now really aren't doing that much damage, but I think we can assume, guesstimate, on what this is going to be good for. What character is this going to be good for? Adventurine might use this because he's a preservation unit, and you know having effect res and maybe he does some type of damage right i don't know but maybe this is good for him i don't know if it's really good right now but i think it'll be good for him now on to the last one what is real uh the abundance light cone uh, honestly i don't like this light cone too much it's going to be increased in the wearer's break effect by 24 percent in s1 and also be whenever you use an attack it'll be restoring your healer's max hp or hp by a certain percent whenever you use a basic attack it's okay it's not the best thing in the world. Um, the break effect is really not necessary. I guess the second effect on it can help your healers out so you're not having to use skill points to heal them up if they're low on HP because you are getting HP back yourself. So it's 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 an okay light cone. It's it's not that good. It's just okay, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about my rankings for each of these light cones now so you guys can get a gist. So uh, let's go. Number one, on my opinion, guys, is going to be this light cone right here, the original light. I think this one just gives you the most stats for free and the requirements needed to hit the crit damage is actually pretty easy to hit. So in my opinion, this is the best light cone here. This is the one you should be prioritizing if you're needing a good like light cone, right? I think this is going to be better than uh, the breakfast light cone that we currently have in game right now. Because first of all, it does give you free attack. Well, I will say the seriousness of breakfast, I guess, does give you free damage bonus. It gives you 24% of max. And then depending on the enemies you defeat, you get an attack bonus as well this gives you an unfront attack bonus uh and then a pretty easy to get crit damage bonus as well so it really just got to way out like where you want it at right so if you're getting a lot of damage bonus on an erudition character already then maybe you just want to go for some extra attack right like argenti i think could use this very very well i think really any erudition character could use this really really well i think it's 
Fairly similar though to Sirius as a breakfast, probably a little bit better because of the extra crit, crit damage you get, right? So hopping into my number two one now is going to be the Harmony Light Cone, just because I feel like the requirements here really aren't too hard to hit. You just match up skill with skill attacks, basic attacks with basic attacks, characters with characters. I think this does give you pretty free damage as long as you're mashing stuff up like that. It's not requiring you like the current one has of you need to go right before your DPS goes. This gives you more opportunity to get more damage out this way. I think it's a really good free to play light cone, and that's why it's my number three, and that's why. I mean my number two what am I talking about my number two my number three I got ahead of myself is going to be flames afar the destruction light cone the reason I have it at number three right now is because this is kind of confusing me as you can see they have like the number here like highlighted in this that means if the wearer exceeds 25% of their max HP or the total amount of their HP is 25% that's what's throwing me off right because usually with like the the ones that say like are, are highlighted are the ones that are the ones that upgrade when you upgrade or it gets higher super imposition. So does this mean whenever you superimpose this, the HP threshold you need to reach of taking damage gets higher and then you get higher damage? That's that's my take on that. I feel like that's kind of harsh, especially if this goes up to like, say what, 50% or something like that. You gotta take 50% of your HP. That, there's no shot. You just have to have really low HP and I don't really think it's worth it at that point. But if that were the case, then it might be a 50% damage bonus. You trade the, that amount of HP out for that percentage of damage. It could be cool, but I feel like it'd be hard to work with. That's why I have it number three. If that's not the case, then it would be my number two. Anyways, let's go ahead and hop into my number four now, which is actually Final Victor. The reason why this is my number four, just because of the fact this light cone is niche. It's very niche to follow up characters. There's not really many characters right now that can take use of it. The more follow up hunt characters we get or multi acting hunt characters we get in the future, this will play well with them. But as of right now, this really only affects Topaz, Dr. Ratio, and maybe Zila, right? I don't really know what other hunt character this would really affect. I guess Jwayi as well with her follow up. Well, she's destruction. It doesn't really matter. I'm, not, I'm coping out of my mind. Anyways, yeah, this really doesn't affect anyone, really. Um, other than Topaz and Dr. Ray, she were follow-up characters. I'm picking up my number five now, which would be the Inhility Light Cone. The reason why I have it at number five is because we don't have that many characters in the game right now that proc multiple debuffs off, rather than, we have Sampo, right, which Sampo does, you know, wind shear. We have uh, Luka, which does, uh, I guess he would do bleed, right? But that's only getting 6% damage increase. I mean, of course, this is S1, it's gonna go up. I, I don't know how much it'll go up by, though. Uh, that's the only reason I'm putting it this low on the list here. It's just because most of the characters we have in the game can only use one debuff at a time, and it only lasts for one turn. And then also, the effect hit rate requirement is actually pretty high in consideration for what you need to get the extra attack percentage for, right? Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm putting it this low on the list. Let's go ahead and hop into our number six now, which is the uh, this one right here, the Preservation Light Cone. Uh, this one gives you a lot of effect resistance, but outside of that, it really doesn't give you much. I mean, your tanks really aren't doing damage right now, or we don't have any tanks in the game that play the role of dealing damage as well. I do think this will be good for the future. As we can see on this uh, art here, we have Adventure Rain up here, and we have, I, I don't know who that, who's that, Rob? I don't know who that is. We have this, this girl right here, right? So maybe both of them will be Preservation Units. I don't know. And then maybe this will work well for both of those, but we don't know right now. We don't have any confirmation on that. And then finally, the last one on my list here is going to be this one. Okay, this has Gallagher on the front. I'm just going to assume this is going to be good for Gallagher. Uh, this really only works for, one, uh, characters that scale their HP off a of break effect for some reason, right? Say we have a character that scales their HP off a of break effect or healing off a of break effect. Or maybe even characters that can, you know, siphon the HP that they get back and give it to the rest of the team somehow or something like that. I think this would work really well, right? Say Gallagher goes and, like, punches it into the basic attack and he gives himself all this HP and then he distributes the HP that he got back to the rest of the team. I think that would be pretty interesting, but right now, as of right now in the game, this really doesn't affect the team too much, and I don't personally like my Abundance Light Cones, and that really help the team out. I want them to help the team out rather than help themselves out. Anyways, guys, that's my opinion on all the Light Cones today. If you guys have my list here, I think the Eurydition Light Cone is the best. What are your guys' thoughts? Though? What are your guys' thoughts on this Light Cone? Did I get anything confused when I was breaking this down here? Let me know in the comment section down below, but that's gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed. This is not gonna be that edited because I'm going to be honest, I didn't really have much time today. I was doing a lot, so I just need to get the video out. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it. Make sure to join the Discord for the Black Swan giveaway if you haven't already. There is going to be one day left. It, it, it literally ends in, like, I think less than 24 hours at this point. So make sure you join the Discord for that. Anyways, guys, see you later. Bye-bye.